Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is 4.36 a.m. Eastern Time. <clears throat> I'm going to apologize in advance if I sound a bit lethargic. I have gotten no sleep all week, having caught the flu on the weekend. I'm literally getting between two and maximum three hours of sleep in broken periods over the course of a day. So I'm I'm beat to hell. And what's been going on this week isn't really helping too much. So I'll get to that as we go over this with Financial Juice. The ECB meeting was yesterday. As you saw, the Fed fund swap traders immediately came in and started boosting price cut or rate cut targets and estimate times. Same thing happened after the advance Q on Q GDP came out at 3%, which beat forecasts. And when you factor in inflation, if your inflation is 3% and your GDP is 3%, you are going nowhere. But market didn't care because it took all that needed to do and made the move that it made yesterday. But let's stick to the point. I'm on this page because today at 8.30, 8.30 in the morning, you get the U.S. PCE price index. This is Jerome Powell's favorite. You also get personal income, and that's it. Everything is out and complete and over with come 8.30 in the morning. So bring you over here onto QQQ before we go to SPX. And what I'm showing is what you have on your spreadsheet, because I know you're doing your homework, I know you're updating this every night after the market closes, taking that 27 seconds that it takes to do it. The QQQ has closed below the open Monday, Wednesday, and yesterday, and not like by a couple of pennies. It's a big fucking close below the open, but yet over on QQQ overnight here, we have finally filled the gap from over here on Tuesday. Finally filled it here, 423.48, took it out. Took it out, we're down here in the low 422s. And futures are oversold. So you have a huge gap to be filled overnight, four points plus up to 426.35, which will bring me to my next point, QQQ, the weakness still. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six consecutive green closes since that mid-Thursday a week ago, mid-Wednesday, 402.92. SPX, 4905, 4900, working again. The risk trade yesterday for a red close, that 4875.4870, Four dollars credit dropped to two fifty when we hit that low there in the in the middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon there. That's a dollar fifty credit on a dollar risk. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out why sometimes focusing your attention on these bigger risk trades and using your de using your day trade if you're not subject to that PDT rule where it's a factor the money's there 4905 4900s very obvious as to why it's there you got two dollars on that ready to go so back to the spx again here six green closes in a row we have been pathetic all week 24 points 22 points we had 38 points 38 points over here on third wednesday Closed well below the open, still closed green. And yesterday, again, less than 30 points. But the point I really want to bring on here is today is Friday. You can go over here and you can count the December quarterly OPEX, December 15th, where we closed red minus 0 0.36 less than one point red, having closed green six days in a row. We closed down 
minus 0 0.36. We don't close red on Fridays. We closed red on Friday on December 29th. We had not had a red close on a Friday since the October 27 bottom. So all of that is factored into today. I am not in any way, shape, or form saying go and buy the dip. You have an enormous upside that potential that you can play today. Bring that into consideration. I bring you to your VIX. And here we are with the VIX with a unbelievable gap up overnight, which because again, not prejudging anything, but knowing the way that the system has worked, the VIX gets crushed on Fridays. So again, keeping that into consideration, today is a day to take that full moon that you got yesterday. Look at that cheap distance, that cheap time, and just take it very, very light, easy, and stress-free, which is the way this is all supposed to be. Over on the SPX, and again, it's like, you know, it's like a ninth grader who claims, you know, that he gets late all the time. He can't fill the gap. He can go down, but he can't fill the gap. Couldn't fill the gap yesterday. Couldn't fill the gap from the day before. Still got the weekend gap over here. And again, talking about this, we have three consecutive green weeks closing above 4853 over here today. Close above 4853.42, which would mean closing. We would be able to close red. And because we've been closing green every Friday since Israel went into Gaza, the streak will end. It will end. It does not smell, does not smell like today is going to be that day. So again, on the SPX, you've got to be expecting that you're going to get that 49, oh, that 4,900 visit up here. 4,898.15. Is that close enough? Well, fuck you. You're talking about two points on a 4,900 point, you know, factor. So yeah. You know, 0.005%. Yeah, close enough. 4,900, 4,905, selling the calls. That's the game. Yes, it's risk because, yes, you are inside the safe edges. But while you have that cheap, ridiculous VIX, you're not going to get a great credit on that. And this is a time when you need to put on that hat and be looking out there to the bigger, broader, wider view, which brings me to Tesla. Look, man, soak. I, in no way, shape, or form, were trying to rip your fucking head off on Tesla, but I wanted to make the point very, very clear to anybody thinking about buying the dip on Tesla. Yes, Tesla 180, you got 60 points, 50 points to the upside over the course of a period of time. I'm not going to tell you it's going to happen in two weeks. I'm not going to tell you it's going to happen in two months. You have a 50, 60 point potential upside over here on Tesla over a period of time. Tesla broke the rules 193, 88, 81 yesterday. That's it. Game over. Tesla is now on the hunt, like I was sharing, for that already hit 180, 165, very strong potential that you could see this below 150. So don't screw yourself up over there with Tesla. Tesla is used to be what it isn't anymore. IBM got in a little bit early, already starting to work out. I saw a couple of you already mentioned in the room, you know, that you flipped IBM, you got your 30%. Some of you got 50%. Cash Lion, you are a fucking monster absolute monster with what you took there on IBM. But IBM, again, only talking about this gap here. Reason why I went out and got March, didn't buy January's. On Netflix, getting some questions on Netflix. Netflix, the game begins 
at 537. Same exact reason why out there into the March, even though many of you already flipped out on Netflix, congratulations. Yes, it is ready again. And a couple of you have asked me about JP Morgan. JP Morgan, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more on. And as much as this may be looking at a cup and handle breakout above 173, pushing higher, I will remind you that the full moon was yesterday. We have been on an insane three month plus going into a fourth month rally. You have your period of time, which is in front of you. And as I shared over there in the chat yesterday, which, you know what, I'll go ahead and pull it up. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, perfect algo scene. We fill the gap, we close red, we ramp up on Friday, crush the VIX, and it's the same ending to January as we had in 2018. Ramp up all the way into the beginning of the, or into the final Friday of the month, January 26. And then you started having some hiccups and some problems that came there. And we had a 11.5% drop over the course of nine trading sessions. It's the way that I see it playing out. And just to go and check on that, let's see here. Uh, date, date, date. When is the date? When is the date? We want to look at the date now. I'll figure it out. Oh, yeah, here, 2024. So let's look at 2018. 2018, lo and behold, the full moon was on January the 31st. January 26th, that was the day we topped out. So have an amazing weekend. Have an amazing Saturday, an amazing Sunday. I know you guys don't have the greatest weather out there, but trust me when I tell you, spring is going to be coming. And if you missed... Tony Robbins, okay? If you missed the Tony Robbins Summit yesterday, you can still watch it. You can watch the replay, and you will not believe how many times he mentions the economy, the stock market, interest rates. Because, again, this isn't a guy who just came out, you know, from around the corner. It's 20 years ago. What, 20, 22 years ago, I went to my first Tony Robbins seminar. I've studied this man, or I've not studied this man. I have followed his teachings and studies because it's not every single thing that he tells you is something you need to do. There's going to be one or two things that he mentions that you subconsciously already knew you needed to do that, but you needed someone else's voice to tell you that. So replay is there. I strongly suggest you get into it. If you missed yesterday, you go through. Today, which is day two, and tomorrow you have day three, and trust me when I tell you, you'll have a good weekend, you'll have a good February, you'll have a good March, and I'm going to do an update on the 32 trades and the nine trades that have gone out so far, and uh, it's kind of impossible that some people are making money and other people are going, hey, what do I do? So somebody is missing an apostrophe or a capital letter somewhere because... Math is math. Have a good weekend.